Hello and welcome to Important Learning, the home for the best stories live at CUNY Logistics University. Navigate with us through the life experience of our students and let yourself be inspired by their challenges and their achievements. Here we go. Nine thousand seventy-two kilometers. Walking that distance will take nonstop about a thousand eight hundred thirty-three hours. This is more than two months of nonstop walking. Good news is that if you take a flight, you can make this trip in just one day. Nine thousand seventy-two kilometers. The distance from Chennai, India, to Hamburg. Long months ago, our guest of today made that trip to start his own journey in a new country and a new culture. We have today in Important Learning our master student, Varun Kumar Pratapan Srinivasan. Tell me that I said it right this time. Yes, it was perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for being here with us. I'm very excited that you're here. Yeah, me too. So Baron studies at KLU the Masters in Global Logistics and Supply Chain Management. And like many other international students at our campus, he took the brave decision of venturing in an international endeavor, leaving behind his comfort zone. A journey full of excitement, I'm sure, but also challenges to overcome. I am really looking forward to get to know all the details of this experience but, um, but uh, let's start from the beginning. Why Germany and why KLU? Okay, thanks for the nice introduction. Um, I was actually not sure that I was going to come to Germany in the beginning. I had an option between the America and Germany, but uh, during the pandemic, Germans seemed to have handled it much better. And I went in that direction. And uh, But I always knew I was going to study supply chain management. Uh, so when I did my research and everything, uh, Hamburg seemed to be the perfect place for the program and KLU was easily hovering the best supply chain program in Germany or sometimes you can say Europe too. So yeah, it was no brainer for me coming here. You're talking about that research because I mean, of course, making a decision for which program you want to study, it is an important choice of life. Uh, how long did it take this research of different options? How did you come across KLU? How did that work? Okay. It wasn't an easy one. I did my bachelor's in a different field in mechanical engineering. And uh, after my bachelor's, I got to work for two years. And during that time, I was working very close in the supply chain team. So I really liked what they were doing and the impact it was having on the company. So I wanted to study more and get more expertise. So I decided to do the master's. So it wasn't really direct or I wouldn't say anyone can just walk in, but something that you should really like. And also right now in the pandemic, it seems everyone's getting all the hype about supply chain. So it, I think everything just came out in the right place for me to choose this. Yeah. I and mean, you couldn't know, but you sort of yeah. f fell into the right field, right? Yeah. At the right time, the right time. in the right yeah. place. It was never planned. <laughs> So that's great. Um, and during that research, because I mean, there is many things that you have to consider when taking a decision such as I'm going to study a master's in this program or in this place. Um, for you, what were the most important factors when making a choice for a master education? I mean, you do a master's normally once, twice. There's very smart people that do many, but uh, it's a big, big decision. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is a big decision. I, I did a lot of research and f first of all, where you're doing your master's, it has to be a good country with a lot of opportunities in the future and uh, the university you're doing it in should have a good reputation. The professors should have a close contact with the industry and active research so that you get to learn something that's new and relevant and not something that's outdated. And uh, you also get to do more interactions with the industry, with internships and all other uh, practical activities. So these were all my parameters when I was checking for the university. And I spoke to a couple of alumni and uh, did a couple of research on the Internet. And KLU seemed to tick all the right boxes. How did you get in contact with the uh, alumni then? So there were two ways, actually. Uh, first one was through LinkedIn. Um, that's like the way you do generally when you don't have an option, but 
Kale, you also had a unibody option where you get to contact them on the website, a bunch of ambassadors who are ready to help us in case we had doubts. So I used both of them and that's how I contacted the alumni. Yeah. And I must say that all our ambassadors are so nice people. They're ready to answer questions. So seemed like check, check, check. You were checking boxes, very thorough in your research. And finally, KLU appears like a good option for you uh, and you decide to apply. From that point, tell us a bit, uh, how did your admission process go? Was that smooth, uh, hard? Tell us. Um, since I, I was able to come up with KLU as one of my options pretty early, I was able to apply as soon as the admissions opened in December. And KLU also follows a rolling admission process. So I got my results in January, pretty quick, pretty quick actually. So uh, as soon as I got the admissions, I got a conditional offer because I did an engineering course and I didn't meet the requirements of a few business courses. So uh, before I get my conditional offer, I did a few courses online to meet the requirements, which was in turn updated with the unconditional admission. Mm -hmm. And during that time, how was the contact with the staff like? Because, of course, I imagine from so far away, it is essential for you to trust the university, to know that they're going to help you and they're there for you. Um, how how did you feel that contact with the university was from the very beginning? Yeah, to be honest, uh, KLU has been the quickest and most responsive university I've been in contact with. I'm not just saying this, this is completely true. Anyone can agree or add on to this. And uh, I also required a lot of documents for my visa process. And for visa, it's easier to get a visa if you have an unconditional admission. So as soon as I did my business courses, Kaylee was able to give me the offer letter pretty quick and also answer all my questions regarding it fast so that I don't have any delays or waste my time. So it, it worked out pretty well. And it's quite important also, especially when you're coming from far, far away country, when you can't just walk into an office and get things done. Having a quick and responsive communication system is quite useful. Yeah, visas can always be a very tricky process, depending on the embassies, the the countries you're coming from. Um, let's let's dig a little bit about that um, time. So you finally get your your admission. You're getting ready yourself to come to Germany, and now you have to apply for your visa and start packing. And how did all this preparation go for you? Not only in the physical or like in the logistical part of visas and packing and whatnot but also mentally preparing for, well, now I am going to be living in Germany. Um, in India, the visa process is pretty long. And my case was a little bit unique because I applied right before the pandemic. And then after I applied, the embassy is closed. <laughs> I had to wait for five months to get my visa. But as soon as the embassy opened, I required a document. And the KLU was also really quick with the reply. And I got the document, I got the visa, and then I finally was able to travel. Um, I've, I've also lived a part of my life abroad in Qatar. So traveling wasn't really a problem for me. I was mentally prepared for it. I just wanted to get my visa done and get my ticket, flight ticket and come to Germany as soon as possible. Were you prepared for the German? Did you, did you already know some German? I, I took a basic German course. Um, I would, I wouldn't say I was really good at it, but I did take a basic course before coming here. And how was it? Is it complicated as a language? Um, it's not the easiest of languages, and but I do have a few friends who are able to master it pretty quickly. And I think I can also do it. And I also took a few of the courses offered by KLU, uh, the German courses here, and that was pretty helpful with the process. Well, at the end of the day, you guys are pretty multilingual in India anyways. So I hope that that has helped you and keeps helping you because I know German is a complicated one. So um, let's talk about now one of the most tricky processes of going to study abroad, finding accommodation. How did that work for you? Did Kale you help you in any way? Okay, so in a big city like Hamburg, accommodation is actually a little bit tricky, but luckily I was able to get the student dorm offer from KLU. So I was able to come here and for the first few months I was sorted. I didn't have to worry about it. And... Uh, after coming to Hamburg and once you meet people and get to know the city better, it's not really hard to get an apartment. You you can find it with a little bit of effort. Yeah. Do you live on your own, you share with people? I, I live in a shared student dorm. It's with three other students. So it's actually pretty lively and fun at home. 
what are the what are the pros and the cons of like living in that in that kind of setup? Uh, you you do have to compromise on your privacy a little bit, but it's you don't have to feel lonely, especially when everything was a lockdown and you were stuck at home. It was it was a good option to have people around. Yeah, I imagine that uh, it's really nice not being alone in a 20 square meters apartment and, and, and not being able to interact with anybody during a lockdown. That has definitely driven nuts many people. So I'm happy that you had at least somebody to share the madness with. <laughs> yeah, true. And you're sharing at home with other people, but you're also sharing the streets of this country with Germans. So uh, I have to ask you, what are the biggest cultural shocks that you have experienced with German culture? Um, I would say on top of my mind, the easiest one is that all the shops are closed on Sunday. <laughs> Coming from Asia, it, you get used to do your shopping on the weekend. So that was pretty new. And also Germans love cash. Uh, I was never used to carrying around so much cash before. So getting used to that was a bit tricky. I have so many coins with me right now. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> and uh, the city is very clean. How, considering how big Hamburg is, it's it's quite clean for the city. And people also tend to follow the rules. So that's that's great. Yeah, like more annoying cultural shocks, more nice cultural shocks. Yeah. Th there is for everything, right? Yeah. And with any other cultures here in KLU, because we have many nationalities in our student body, have you encountered something that you're like, oh my God, this person I have, I'm doing an assignment with is such different in A, B or C? Um, yeah, actually KLU has a very international culture. I, I remember my first project I was on here, I was with a team of five and everyone was from a different country. We all had a different level of thinking, different sort of thinking. And uh, when you actually get to work with the collaborative team with a different thought process, so you come up with great results. It was nice. And uh, KLU culture in general is very international, friendly and open. So that's a great mix. So I enjoyed it here and people will appreciate it too. That is great. Yeah. Uh, with all these cultural differences still, I think Germany is a great country to live in. That's my personal opinion, of course. Uh, what do you consider or what is it for you the best to be living in Germany? I love traveling and Germany has open borders with 20 other countries. So if you're in Germany, you can really travel and check out so many different cultures and so many different countries. So that was, that's, I would say the biggest pro. Um, the other thing is there's a lot of great job opportunities too in Germany and uh, Germans were known for their working culture. And after coming here, I did a few student jobs. So I can, I can actually say that that's true. They have a good balance of working and also having your time in the weekends. So that that's great. Yeah. And I mean, uh, talking about traveling, we're also sort of like in the middle of Europe. So everything is very handy. You know, you can just travel a couple of hours here, a couple of hours there, and you're already in another country. You have passed the border and everything looks so different in such little space, right? Of course, if I am asking you about the advantages of being in Germany, I cannot not ask you about what you miss about your country. Because of course, there is many cool things here. And I'm sure that you are by now very used to the life in Germany. But what do you miss the most of not being at home? Um, yeah, I do. I do miss my family a lot. Uh, I've been away from home since I graduated from high school. So I've, I've been able to cope up with it, but I really do miss them a lot. And I'm also a vegetarian. So getting good, spicy, flavorful Indian food is hard to come by in Germany. So yeah, that's what I miss the most. The food. I think that yeah. almost everybody that comes from any country to any country that he'd say like, yeah, but the food in my country is the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, about your family, now that you're mentioning them, um, so you're they're living so far away, and also with time zone. How how is this long distance relationship with your family working? How. Often do you talk to your family, friends? How do you work that out? Um, since I left my house after my high school, I've been able to try to come up with a pattern and a kind of like a stable thing where I, I talk to them every day, but for very few minutes. So you do have constant contact with them. At the same time, you don't 
lose track of what they're up to in their lives and what I'm up to in my personal life. So yeah, we're updated and we're able to maintain a really good relationship. And my friends are around the world. So living in different time zones, you, it's not very easy to keep up. But yeah, I'm trying to make it work. <laughs> So a few minutes a day, every day, yeah. not to overwhelm yourself, but hey, mom, I'm still alive. Everything <laughs> is going well. Is your mom asking you, what did you eat that day? Because I think that's the difficult question. My mother, are you eating well? Um, yeah, but since I'm really busy, I'm not able to cook something different. She asked me, why do you eat the same thing every day? But yeah, that's the situation I'm in. So it's good. Are you able to also keep your ties with your culture here in Hamburg? Is there a way for you to still feel sort of at home either through other Indian friends or having, I don't know, experiences that allows you to still be connected to your roots? Yeah, I, I, I do have a lot of Indian friends in Hamburg. And yeah, I, when I talk to them, I, I do feel like I'm back home. We, we, since we do have a lot of shared experiences, yeah, you, you get to still keep and connect with your roots and uh, able to experience your home far away. Yeah. How would you say is different the Indian community that you know in Hamburg to the Indian community that you know in India? Um, I wouldn't say it's it's much different. It's the same. We are the same where we go. We are Indians. <laughs> yeah. Um, you spent uh, almost your first entire year. I'm changing a little bit here because I think is a very important milestone almost in your life and in the life of the students that have gone through this pandemic. You spent almost your first entire year of studies doing the classes online because uh, it was not possible to be on campus um, due to the pandemic. How was this experience, Akail, you in general, how did you feel this experience? Um, I, I did my uh, first first semester in campus actually, and uh, when I did that, I was able to experience the the great infrastructure we have and also the amazing views we have of Hafen and the Elf Harmony. But once the lockdown came and everything switched online, the professors were actually able to keep the classes interactive with breakout rooms and guest lectures. So it was a bit hard in the beginning being able to look at the screens the whole day. But yeah, I, I got used to it. But now now I'm really happy to back in campus this quarter and I'm really excited to meet all my friends and having physical classes again. What did you take away from this challenge of being in a pandemic? Yeah, it, it is something new, but it also shows that we can always overcome any any obstacles. We just have to push our, th push our way through and adapt ourselves with change. Was it very difficult to, for example, organize uh, assignments in groups, being every person in a different house and not being able to actually meet in person and it, it, brainstorm, collaborate? It was a bit difficult in the beginning, but um, once we got used to the online tools that we have, like WhatsApp or Zoom, we were able to set up meetings pretty quickly and also at our own timings. So yeah, it was much more efficient than the physical way. Well, I have no doubt that you guys uh, who have studied in such difficult circumstances are going to be the most adaptable generation of all times. So you're like ready to adapt to changes. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that in this very changing world, that's going to work in your favor, even though it was hard during a couple of years. But I'm sure that with the long run, you're going to look back and say like, yeah, but I was ready for this. So... Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, we have to get going. I want to, before we go, take a little quick peek into our crystal ball. And I, let me know, how do you see your future after you graduate for, from the master's in global logistics and supply chain management? I tell you. Um, so my main goal was to do my master's was to improve my supply chain knowledge. So I hope when I graduate, I get to work in a German company where I'm able to be in a strategic role and apply the learnings that I had in the university. And it would be great if it's in Hamburg because I love the city um, or it's anywhere in Germany also would be fine. So you see yourself staying in Germany for a while. Yeah, for a while. Yes. And uh, just to finish, finish, uh, is there anything that you would say to students or uh, applicants, candidates that are out there thinking, mm, maybe I'll do a master's or they're thinking of a study in a road, what will be a little tip of advice that you could give them? Um, I think 
the easiest one is start applying uh, when, when you when you keep thinking you get to get carried away so once you start applying you get to know the actual process and sometimes it might be easier sometimes it'll be harder so yeah once you start and you'll actually think it'll be better for you to come and do your masters in a good university such as KLU you'll actually uh, learn a lot and also truly enrich your life yeah Well, that's the tip. Start getting going. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> Great, Barun. Thank you so much. I hope very much that you achieve your purpose. But when you finish at KLU, that you really get the kind of job, the kind of life that you are um, going for. And uh, I wish the best of the luck in your future. Who knows? Maybe in some time you can come back to this podcast as an alumnus super successful professional and inspire other students with uh, how you started. That's the dream. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us today, Arun. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys in Hamburg. For sure. And uh, here we leave it today. We'll hear more amazing stories in our next episode of Important Learning, KLU Stories. Until then, receive a warm greeting from who has been on this side of the waves. Christopher Estegar in the technical side, Laura Wallini in the production, and I'm Patricia Vendala. Take care and keep your crane moving. Cheers! Discover Kuna Logistics University in Hamburg, Germany. Learn more about their offered business and supply chain management study programs at the-klu.org.